Hi, I'm Josh DeCrane, and thanks for purchasing the Pods for Pennies eBook. This is the As Promised supplementary video created exclusively for the Pods for Pennies eBook. It will serve as a broad overview of the content provided in the book, in addition to providing a detailed step-by-step -step of my money-saving technique in high-definition detail to ensure you're able to start saving hundreds of dollars a year by making your own pods. Now, if you're like me, you purchase one of these pod coffee makers because you enjoy a gourmet quality cup of coffee. Machines like these and others from Keurig and Krups offer people at home the superior brewing capabilities normally found in expensive coffee shops. Nobody likes paying $4 for a cup of coffee, and pods do cut down considerably on your daily fix. But pods have a secret much darker than the darkest of roasts, and manufacturers are counting on your continued loyalty to these special filters. But are they really so special? Did you know that one pod provides only four ounces of coffee? A typical cup of coffee is between 10 to 16 ounces, so you are forced to use twice as many pods for a normal cup of coffee, which costs you anywhere from two to three times as much, depending on your taste preference. Once you open a package of pods, you are warned that quality will be compromised if you do not use them within two weeks of opening the flimsy paper packaging. This is another way you pay more. Coffee manufacturers are banking on the fact that you will not risk drinking an expired cup of coffee. They say variety is a spice of life, but pods restrict your blend choices to only a handful of choices. In other words, they decide what roast, what strength, and what variety you buy. But what if your favorite brand or flavor doesn't make pods? You're out of luck. That's what. But with Pods for Pennies, we pry away these blend restrictions, opening you up to a world of choices. Thousands of choices from butterscotch to amaretto or even banana hazelnut. With Pods, better stick to the basics. It's easy to understand why the average consumer would feel angry, frustrated, even compelled to dump their expensive Pod coffee maker at the local Goodwill. After all, with Pods, you're paying substantially more for less. Let's break down the numbers. At a coffee shop, you're going to spend $2.50 a day, $17.50 a week, $70 a month, and $840 a year. With the store-bought pods, you're going to spend $1.80 a day, $12.60 a week, $50.40 a month, and over $600 per year. Now with my money-saving technique, Pods for Pennies, check this out, you're only going to spend $0.15 cents a day, $1 a week, $4.20 a month, and only $50 for a whole year. $50 a year! You blow through $50 in just one month with the store-bought pods. You'll see that even though you're avoiding coffee shop sticker shock and saving a few dollars per week, you could be saving hundreds more by following a few simple steps and using everyday household supplies. Just an ordinary can of coffee lasts me about two months. Plastic cup. We have coffee filters, scissors, spice jar, and a plate. We're gonna start by taking our ordinary plastic cup and cutting it down to about an inch or so. I'm gonna cut the circumference around. Try to make sure that uh, when you are making the cup that uh, it's not jagged, but otherwise it will catch on the filter and will cause all kinds of problems. Uh, so then you wrap it around the spice jar, and put it into the bottom of the cup there. And I usually use about uh, three medium scoops, uh, not too much because uh, to some degree your coffee pot will uh, tend to overflow, so you want to be you want to be careful about that. You want to kind of tamp it down to get all of the the coffee grounds settled down on the bottom. Take your scissors and uh, cut off the excess filter. And then what you want to do is you want to kind of fold your filter in, being very careful not to get too many grounds outside of the filter itself. Uh, take your spice jar again and tamp it down. And what I'm kind of doing is I'm kind of grinding the uh, the, the coffee grounds a little bit finer than they really are. So I'm gonna flip it over into the filter there. And you just push the start button and you're good to go. Fresh cup of coffee. As a coffee connoisseur, one of the things that frustrated me most about pods wasn't just the price, it was the taste. 
It was excellent. It absolutely blew my expectations away the second I tasted my first frothy cup. Now, it's no secret that coffee is loaded with addictive qualities. It's one of the reasons that designer coffee chains have become a regular fixture in the lifestyles of millions. To the pod's credit, the development of the pod coffee machine marked an important event in the timeline of the history of coffee. For the first time, the average consumer could get that designer taste and the comfort of their own kitchen without forking over the price of car insurance every month. I was saving some money, yeah, but in today's economy, it was important for me to save even more. Everyone wants to save money, and everyone is cutting corners. We brought this video to you because each month, millions of dollars are needlessly spent on pods. Money you'd probably prefer to spend on something else given the choice. Owners of pod coffee machines don't realize the financial commitment they are making by holding themselves hostage to pods. With the pods for pennies technique that I've shared with you today, the everyday coffee drinker will save on average more than $500 per year. I saved just over $600. You might save even more. To put that into perspective, typical savings with pods for pennies would pay for a whole year of high-speed internet, a brand new laptop, or a family vacation. Thanks for watching Pods for Pennies, because every penny counts.